Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about statistical interactions in general linear models. Now, most of what we've talked about so far with respect to general linear models has dealt with only additive or main effects. But in general linear models, we can also include statistical interactions. Now, if you recall, our basic definition of a statistical interaction is that the effect of one covariate is not constant but instead it depends on the level of some other covariate. Now we can have lots of different types of statistical interactions. We can have interactions between two factors where the effect of one level is not constant. It depends on what the level is for the other factor as shown in this interaction plot. But we can also have interactions between continuous and categorical predictors where a continuous effect represented by some slope might differ between two levels of some other factor B. Finally, we can have statistical interactions between two continuous variables, where the slope of the relationship between one variable and our response variable can change continuously across the levels of some other continuous predictor. Now we can specify a statistical interaction in R using the colon to indicate that we want to include a statistical interaction between our two predictors A and B. Now luckily the notation for our statistical interaction is exactly the same regardless of whether A and B are factors or continuous predictors of Y. Now, when we're calculating our degrees of freedom for our statistical interaction then between any two factors A and B, the degrees of freedom for the interaction term is always going to be equal to the degrees of freedom for predictor A multiplied by the degrees of freedom for predictor B. So here we have an example of a statistical interaction between sex and body size measured as snout vent length as predictors of the hatchling mass of side blotched lizards. So in our linear model, then we're predicting the hatchling mass of lizards by the sex of the lizard, the snout vent length of the lizard and the interaction between sex and snout vent length. And what we're doing then in this statistical model is to not force the relationship between body size and body mass to be consistent between the two sexes. Instead, we're saying that we're going to allow this relationship between snout vent length and hatchling mass to differ between males and females. Now, just like we've done in the past, we can use our linear model to make predictions for specific observations in a model that includes a statistical interaction. And the same basic principles apply. We need to plug in what the observed covariates are for a particular observation or scenario. And we can use these to predict what our expected response measurement is going to be. The only hitch in this particular case is that we need to interpret our interaction as the multiplication of these two covariates. So our statistical interaction then between X1 and X2 represents the observed value for covariate one multiplied by the observed value of covariate two multiplied by the parameter for the statistical interaction to get that part of the model. So let's walk through an example then, like I've shown you already for hatchling mass being predicted by snout vent length the sex of the lizard and the interaction between the lizard's sex and snout vent length. So we can specify this linear model in R here, where we've got hatchling mass being modeled by sex, snout vent length, and the interaction between sex and snout vent length. And this statistical model in R is represented by this linear model below, where we have hatchling mass equal to our intercept plus our slope effect for being male, our slope effect for body size, and the parameter or slope effect for the interaction term. And below we have the output of this statistical model where we have each of those four parameters listed down here, the intercept beta one, beta two, 
and beta three corresponding to the interaction term. So let's walk through an example then of calculating a predicted hatchling mass for a 25 millimeter female. So here again, we have our linear model where we've simply plugged in the parameters corresponding to each of these betas. And if you recall, we need to specify that the sex male predictor is like asking a question, is the hatchling male? And if the hatchling's male, we insert a one in place of this covariate. And if the sex of the hatchling is female, we insert a zero because the answer to the question, is it male, is no. And when the answer is no, we insert a zero. So in this case, since we're predicting the hatchling mass for a 25 millimeter female, we can ask the question, is it male? The answer is no, and so we insert a zero here. We insert the snout vent length for this female that we want to make a prediction for of 25 millimeters. And for the interaction term then, we insert a zero for the question, is it male? And 25 millimeters for the snout vent length. And you can see that because we're dealing with females, this term drops out as well as the interaction term because we're not making a prediction for males we're using, making a prediction for females, which is our reference category in this particular case. And we can simplify this equation and say that the predicted hatchling mass for a 25 millimeter female is 0 0.65 grams. Now we can do the same thing for a 30 millimeter male. In this case, our answer to the question, is this hatchling male, is yes. So we insert a one in place of this uh, predictor variable, both here in the main effect as well as here in the interaction term. Now note that we've also changed from 25 millimeters to a 30 millimeter lizard, so we need to update that information here and here. And when we simplify this equation, we can calculate that the predicted hatchling mass for a 30 millimeter male is 0 0.92 grams. Now these are predicted values for specific sets of covariates in our linear model. But you might also be able to see that we can take this overall linear model and simplify it and calculate separate regression lines for males and females, where we're not going to specify a particular body size for the hatchling. Instead, we're going to leave that contained as a variable within a regression model but we're gonna create a regression model separately for males and females. Now, we're not gonna run separate statistical models here. We're gonna do all of this from our single overall statistical model that included the statistical interaction. So first of all, let's work through the example for females. We need to ask the question, is the hatchling a male? And the answer is no. So we insert a zero in here for the main effect and a zero in here for the interaction term. When we simplify this equation then, we get a regression equation for the hatchling mass of females being equal to negative 0 0.85 plus 0 0.06 times the snout vent length of those females. And that is indicated by the red line in this plot. Now you can see that because females are the reference category, this effect of being male and the interaction term have both dropped out. And the regression equation that we get out is the intercept and the effect of snout snout vent length directly from our statistical model, directly from the output. But what happens when we want to create a similar regression equation for males? Well, let's work through the example. Now we're talking about males. So the answer to our question, is it a male, is yes. So we insert a one here for the main effect and a one here for the interaction term. And what we can see then is that this effect of being male is, results in an increase in the intercept of 0 0.18 from the intercept that we had for females. So our new intercept is negative 0.67. Also, the effect of being male 
is to change the slope by negative 0.007. So when we simplify this whole equation then, we get a regression equation for males where the hatchling mass is equal to negative 0.67 plus 0.053 times the snout vent length. And that's indicated by this blue line in our figure. So the difference between males and females is that the line or regression equation for males has a slightly larger intercept, in fact, 0.18 higher than the intercept for females. And the slope for males is a little bit lower than the slope for females, meaning the slope for males is 0 0.007 less than the slope for females, which is indicated here. So here we've gone through and calculated a regression equation then for males and one for females using the parameters from our general linear model, including the main effect for sex and snow vent length, as well as the interaction between these two terms. Let's go through a couple of tips for interpreting statistical interactions. In a general linear model, when we have a significant interaction between two predictors like A and B, then it can be challenging to interpret the main effects of A and the main effects of B on their own, because this statistical interaction tells us that the effect of A is not constant, it depends on the value of B. And vice versa, the effect of our predictor B is not constant, it depends on the value of A. Furthermore, it can be extremely dangerous to try and interpret a general linear model that includes a statistical interaction without one of the component main effects. So in this model below where I've predicted Y by the main effect of A and the interaction between A and B without including a main effect of B can lead to some really uh, unexpected or difficult to interpret results in terms of the parameters that we get out of the model. The way we interpret those parameters is not quite the same as the way we've been doing it so far when we have a fully specified model that includes all of the main effects that are included in our statistical interactions. Now, just like we can have interactions between two predictors in a model, we can also get more complicated and include three or four or even more complicated interactions. Now, once we get beyond two-way interactions, these can become very difficult to interpret biologically, but we need to remember our same basic principle. When we have a three-way interaction, what that tells us is that the components of that three-way interaction are not constant. They depend on values of the other component of the interaction. So in this case, we might say that when we have a three-way interaction, that the two-way interaction is not constant. The two-way interaction depends on the value of the third predictor in our three-way interaction. So here are some plots trying to depict three-way interactions. The first is a statistical interaction between the effects of behavioral activity, behavioral aggression, and the amount of competition for vacant territories on the annual reproductive success of red squirrels. And you can see that in this three-way interaction, the two-way interaction between activity and aggression in terms of their effect on annual reproductive success is not constant. We have a very bumpy surface under conditions of high competition, but this very bumpy surface flattens under conditions of low competition. So here we have a three-way interaction between two continuous predictors and one categorical predictor, where it was easiest to depict this visually by using our 3D surface and splitting it into the different categories for our levels of competition. Now, three-way interactions between three continuous variables can be extremely challenging to visualize graphically. And so what we might do in this particular case 
is to artificially categorize one of the continuous predictors so that we can depict three-dimensional planes across each of these artificially created levels for what would otherwise be a continuous predictor. So in summary then, a statistical interaction means that the effect of one predictor is not constant. It depends on the level of the other predictor. We interpret interactions in our linear model as multiplications between the observed covariates in the linear model. In order to get meaningful predictions and meaningful parameters from our statistical model, we need to include all of the main effects in our statistical model that are included in our statistical interactions. And this also goes for lower order interactions when we have, say, a three-way interaction between A, B, and C, we need to not only consider the main effects of A, B, and C, but also all of the pairwise two-way interactions between A and B, A and C, and B and C. So a three-way interaction requires all of the main effects as well as all of the composite two-way interactions. So we can include not only two-way interactions, but higher order statistical interactions like three or four way interactions. But it's important to always include the lower order interactions as well as the main effects. And the way we interpret these higher order interactions, let's say as a three way interaction, is that the two way statistical interaction is not constant. It depends on the level of the predictor that is included in the three way interaction. 